Welcome Sam's talk. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2-0! Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I am your host. Tonight, Ottawa took on the Detroit Red Wings in a rivalry game where Detroit is fighting for their playoff lives. They're in a fierce battle with teams like the Penguins and the Toronto Maple Leafs. For that wild card spot, they are currently in a wild card spot. While the Ottawa Senators look to discontinue their climb out of the bottom of the Eastern and NHL standings. Now, Ottawa... Last time these two teams faced off, Ottawa and Detroit, let's just say, got into the fisticuffs. We all remember what happened. That unfortunate incident with Dylan Larkin where he got hurt. Uh, he was in for this game. He's been okay for some time, which is great news. But there is some animosity between these two teams going into this one. Um, we didn't really see that much of a chippy affair, to be honest with you. Uh, a little surprised about that, but we'll talk about that later. I want to mention this before we get into the rest of the game recap, though. I want to say thank you to all the people who nominated Sense Talk for five different nominations at the Ottawa Awards of 2024. It's an honor. It's incredible that we won last year. And the fact that we're just getting nominated, of course, is a huge honor. I'm very humbled by it, and I really, really do appreciate uh, you know, the nomination. It's a true honor to be able to make the content for you guys and to see that you guys love it that much to nominate us for five different awards truly means a lot. So uh, it's already a huge accomplishment and an honor to be nominated, but you might as well win the thing, right? So we're defending our Best YouTube Channel Award 2023. Let's win it in 2024. But we're also up for Best Blog, Best Ottawa-Based Influencer, Best Podcaster, Best Sports Podcast, and of course, Best YouTube Channel. So I'll put a link to uh, the voting um, center, I guess you can call it, the, the link to vote for us in the description below and in the comment section down below. I'll pin that comment. We would really appreciate it. But uh, regardless if you vote for us or not, thank you for watching this video and your support with that. But as well, just for nominating us. Truly an honor. So thank you very much. Now let's get into the game uh, recap. So before the game begun, yesterday Ottawa put Rourke Chardier, the fourth line center, on waivers. Bit of a shocking move. Um, he's looked pretty good this year. I thought he beat out Kaslik for that fourth line role. But, um, you know, the All-Star break's coming up. And Forsberg likely will be back by the end of that All-Star break within the next 10 days or so. So within the next two weeks at the minimum. So because of that, they probably need to clear up some cap space to bring him back. Uh, so Chardier is probably that first move to do that. Um, and I'm glad he cleared waivers. I really am. Uh, he's somebody that can really help Belleville in their pursuit of the playoffs, but more so for Ottawa and the organizational depth. It never hurts to have players like that remain in the organization. He's a hard and soul type of guy, and uh, once again, it never hurts to have a guy like that in your lineup or in the organization. Now, um, you can look on your screen right now. It's really interesting. Uh, the 10 game split between his first 10 games and his last 10 games, that of course being Jack Martin's first 20 games as the senator head coach. Uh, obviously, there's been a massive improvement, as you can see, in the last 10 games. Uh, obviously, the first 10 games were a bit of a, um, a tire fire, just like prior to his, um, you know, assumption to the head coaching role. Um, you know, look, the most staggering stats to me out of that is the penalty kill, which has risen by nearly 20% in that time span, and the shot against per game as well, which has dropped by nearly 10 shots as well per game. Um, drastic, drastic improvement by the Ottawa Sanders defensively, no doubt, which is why the penalty kill and the shots against per game have improved. Uh, that is not a shocker, but it's great to see that this core can play well with structure and if they buy into the coach's system. So um, to everyone that always says we should trade some of these core guys, just look at the last 10 games. This team is still young. They're still learning. Um, and blowing it all up, retool maybe, but blowing it all up is still a crazy concept to me. Now the last thing I'll mention before we get into the game recap and start talking with the actual game, is Jake Sanderson, in their first period of play, midway through or so, uh, got hurt. We don't really know how, but Sportsnet noticed during the game, uh, in the latter half of the first period, that he was off the bench and he did not return, uh, would not be on the bench for the second period, and the Ottawa Sanders will make it official, as he would not return for the rest of the game with a lower body injury. Uh, I'm hoping it's precautionary. Um, of course, Ottawa, like I've already mentioned, does not play for 10 more days. 
the All-Star break begins literally now. Uh, the next Sens game is in uh, 10 days against the Toronto Maple Leafs, so a week and a half, right? So um, hopefully it's just precautionary. They give them some time to heal up. But if it is long-term, maybe Clevin gets called up. Maybe Maxine Gannett gets called up. I don't know. Hopefully that's not the case, though. Hopefully Jake Sanderson is okay. Now let's get into the game recap. So the first period we go, and literally Sanderson was out uh, within seven minutes of the first period. And it's not really shocking. A couple minutes later, the Detroit Red Wings would capitalize and strike first to make it one nothing Detroit. This is a defensive miscue and a disastrous defensive miscue, I should say, by Eric Brandstrom and Jacob Bernard Docker as JBD feeds Brandstrom a pass. But as he tries to get the pass, he can't even handle the pass, doesn't get the pass at all. But when he's trying to get the pass, he falls. This is not timid hockey, but he falls. And of course, the Detroit Red Wings capitalize to make it one nothing. It's Daniel Sprong. Um, you know, I'm always a defender of Eric Brandstrom. I think he's a great player, but this year it's definitely been a down year for him. And that was one of his worst moments by far as his mistake single-handedly gives Detroit the one nothing lead after 20 minutes of play. But we've seen it recently with Ottawa Sanders, especially when they're down going into the second period, you know, they come back, they fight back. And that was not the case 30 or so games ago. Um, the Ottawa Senators would roll over and die if they were down going to the second period of play. Or even if they were up by a goal going to the second period, they would die somehow anyways. The second period used to be a black hole for the Ottawa Senators. But that has completely done a 180 over the last little bit. As we go to the second period of play and not even five minutes in, the Ottawa Senators tie it up. A great play here from Parker Kelly who keeps it in, forces it over the JBD on the blue line who hammers a shot. And Casty Mark Kastelik with a beautiful tip over the glove of Alex Leon, the Detroit Red Wing goaltender, and the Ottawa Senators tied up at 1-1. A great goal here for Ottawa. They get things going early on in the second period of play. And while Castle gets rewarded with a tip goal, he honestly deserves all the credit for this goal because Kelly and JBD did a great job, of course, keeping it in and getting that shot on net. But Kaslik behind the net was the one that forced Detroit off the puck with the four check. So Kaslik has looked better the last few games. I think he's noticed after the scratches and Chartier's play, he really needs to pick it up. And he has. Gets rewarded with a goal. 1-1 game. And then with about five or six minutes left in the second period of play, Ottawa gets called for a penalty. Nonsense penalty, but we move on. The penalty's killed. Moritz Sider, his controller looks like it disconnects. He falls, and Shane Pinto with a huge block. And Ottawa gets to take advantage of that Moritz Sider fall after that Pinto block. It slowly slides to Brady Kachuk, who comes out of the box. Nothing more electric as Al Capitano gives Ottawa the lead. It's 2-1 Senators. Al Capitano, Brady Kachuk with a beautiful goal. Top shelf glove side past Alex Lyon. And Shane Pinto, as I already mentioned, got that assist with a great block to end that power play. Out of the box, top shelf, Al Capitano, Brady Kachuk, Ottawa leads 2-1 after 40 minutes of play. What a second period of play, but what a goal there for Ottawa's captain, Brady Kachuk. You don't see it every single day, a player coming out of the box and scoring a beautiful goal like that. That's Selly as well. Holy cow, the whole goal is electric. Out of the box, top shelf, breakaway, and a Selly with the bench. Unbelievable goal there for Brady Kachuk. Who wants it, right? Who wants it? This guy loves to play against Detroit as Ottawa leads going into the third period of play. And by the way, uh, the go-ahead goal here to give Ottawa the 2-1 lead after 40 minutes of play was Brady Kachuk's first shot on goal in the game. Now, that's not really notable. Kachuk last game literally had 13 shots, okay? So, I mean, or 13 shot attempts, I believe, right? So, this guy gets a lot of shots every game. So, one shot, okay, whatever. He got the goal, whatever, right? No, this is a huge moment for Brady Kachuk because you can see on the screen here, Brady Kachuk is only the second player in the last 30 years with at least 200 shots on goal in each of his first six NHL seasons. He will join Alex Ovechkin in that category. Congratulations to Brady Kachuk in Hall of Fame um, you know, conversation right there in the terms of the stats. So uh, when you're up there with a guy like Alex Ovechkin in any stat, you're doing something right. So congratulations to Brady Kachuk. As we go to the third period of play and things are looking calm. Things are looking calm. Ottawa's penalty kill is doing well. But Detroit, they take advantage of a small defensive miscue by Ottawa as Tim Stutzla leaves. Dylan Larkin, the Detroit captain, the uh, epicenter of the incident of uh, the last time these two teams faced off, of course. Getting a bit of revenge here on Ottawa as Stutzla leaves Dylan Larkin for Kubalik. Kubalik does not pick up on that. Larkin takes advantage 
and roofs one glove side past Corposalo through a crowd. The Tylus one up at two apiece. Can't really do much there if you're Jonas Corposalo, who's looked pretty good tonight overall, I'll be honest with you. As Ottawa and Detroit are tied at two after 60 minutes of play. We go to overtime. That's a big point for Detroit. They at least get a point. They need the two, though. Like I mentioned, they're in a fierce Wild card battle. Well, the Ottawa Sanders are just looking to pick up points and get some respectability back from around the league. Uh, so we go to overtime and Ottawa wins the faceoff. And that's basically game because Detroit would never touch the puck again. It's all Ottawa. And after Tom Shabbat misses a shot on a clear, incredible opportunity, Ottawa somehow goes back the other way. Tom Shabbat has a chance to redeem himself with a 2-1 opportunity, essentially. He has Shane Pinto driving to the net. Tom Shabbat with a saucer pass. Pinter puts it home. What a goal as Ottawa walks it off. Wins it 3-2. And now Ottawa has won back-to-back -back games in overtime as Shane Pinto with the OTGWG. Tarasenko and Shabbat get the assists on the goal as the Ottawa Senators take down Detroit and take that two points that Detroit desperately and definitely wanted. What a win for Ottawa. Back-to-back -back overtime winners. You love to see it in a span of 72 hours. The go to the All-Star break is Ottawa is 6-2-2 two two in their last 10. Back-to-back -back OTWs as they also improve to 20-25-2 and two on the year. While Detroit falls to 26-18-6 on the year. Um, so Ottawa, still some work to do, but they've got 20 wins on the year. Uh, so that's great. Um, and of course, just the fight back we saw from Ottawa, obviously going down one nothing early, fighting back in the second period, and then of course fighting back to win it in overtime after giving up the you know the lead. So um, Ottawa has really shown a lot of fight as of late. It's shown in the record. It's shown in the last ten games. It's shown in a lot of the statistical categories, as we mentioned earlier in the video with Jacques Martin and his ten game split between his first ten games and his last ten games as a sense head coach. Things have certainly improved as of late. It's obvious with the eye test. The analytics show it, the statistics show it, and the record shows it. So Ottawa certainly has been playing far, far better. Now, I noted this when Jake Sanderson went down. I wanted to see what the stats would look like on the defensive side of things for Ottawa in terms of time on ice. And Tom Shabbat led the way big time tonight, nearly 31 minutes on the ice, 30-43, three block shots, one shot on goal, and assist as well, of course, on that game-winning goal. Um, pretty good game there for Tom Shabbat, playing 30-plus minutes. Say what you will about Tom Shabbat. There's a lot of critics about this guy. Um, this guy is a workhorse, and there's not a lot of defensemen in the National Hockey League that on any given night can play 30-plus minutes and do a damn good job at that. So Tom Shabbat is an incredible defenseman. I don't give a damn what anyone has to say uh, to say the contrary about that. He is an incredible defenseman. When your guy can go out there, play 31 minutes like it's nothing, and contribute to get the win in overtime with some offense as well. While of course playing solid defense. Um, Tom Shabbat's complete package. Sure he has some bad moments. But who doesn't right? So a great game for Tom Shabbat. Artem Zub as well. 24 minutes, 20 seconds. One block, one hit as well. Um, a good game there for Artem Zub. Who had to play a big role after Sanderson went down. And of course for Jacob Chikrin. Another defenseman who really had to step up of course. Uh, with Sanderson going down. He played just under 30 minutes at 28-37. He had two blocks, one hit, two shots on goal. Another solid performance there. Um, and look, the top three defensemen for Ottawa, no doubt are those three. Because look, Jacob Bernard Docker, 16 minutes. A little more than he normally would play, but not that much considering the circumstances. And Eric Brandstrom, especially, 12 minutes. Just over 12 minutes. I mean, Eric Brandstrom, I can see him getting shipped down in the next month or so uh, with the trade deadline coming up. Um, just 12 minutes, that says it all. And Jacob Bernard Docker got a few more minutes, I guess. But both you would have expected to play a bit more instead of two of your defensemen nearly playing or one playing 30 minutes and another one playing nearly 30 minutes um, to even it out a bit more. But it really shows how Jacques Martin doesn't have a lot of trust in those two defensemen. Um, but Branstrom playing 12 minutes, particularly even with penalty kill time, uh, I think is uh, should be a major red flag for him, I would say. Um, and I think the writing probably is on the wall. Uh, I also want to shout out Shane Pinto, of course, with the game-winning goal. Two points tonight, uh, four shots on goal, one hit, one block, and nearly 20 minutes of ice time. A great game for him. Speaking of great games, Jonas Corposalo, another solid performance. He's 5-1-2 and two in his last seven starts. Uh, he faced 25 shots today, made 23 saves, only allowed two goals, a 9-20 save percentage. Solid performance there from Jonas Corposalo, who's looked fantastic since getting pulled in that horrific loss to the New York Rangers last Saturday. So... Uh, yeah, besides that, Ottawa wins. The next game, as I've already mentioned, is in a, about a week and a half next Saturday against the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I'll see you before then. Don't worry. 
I have some interviews hopefully lined up soon with some former senators, so stay tuned for that. But besides that, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think down below. Of course, I'll see you all soon. Go Sens Go!